Well, here we are at day three of painting an icon of Martha and Mary. And today uh, we will do quite a bit of work on the uh, highlights and making these garments white with these uh, dark uh, coloured backgrounds uh, with the, the shading but basically using titanium white on these two garments. Uh, the uh, little jar that Martha is holding needs to be painted, so does the scroll that Mary is holding. But that will come later. That will come about when we do the shoes, and I think these feet, this foot certainly needs to be moved a little bit over there. But basically, highlights for these garments, these garments, and then background, halos, inscriptions. So, we're ready to start our day's work. The highlights for all the garments uh, will be using titanium white uh, and for these under uh, lower garments it's only titanium white that I'm using but it's at this stage quite dilute that is to say there's a lot of uh, egg tempera I haven't added water just egg tempera but it goes on very dry, that is, I wipe off the brush uh, 17, at least 17 times, it's usually more, so that each layer that goes on is very thin, you know, so that the end result isn't gluggy, which it would be if you had a sort of a, a wet, eggy brush. One of the things that I do, particularly in the lower leg, is to be conscious of where the shape of the leg will be, particularly the calf. You can see on the uh, Martha figure that I've got quite a uh, sort of a, a bow in one of her legs. Um, now, it's not necessarily going to stay that way, but I stay conscious of that shape so that when the garment does straighten out, if it does, then I don't do something that's going to be contradictory to what the shape of the leg would be, so it would just look silly. I haven't copied the highlights that the model has. There are a few things that I have imitated, particularly uh, the uh, bottom of the garment with the little fold falling over the foot. However, I've changed them around. They've got the leading foot going away from each other. I've got it going towards each other. Now while this is playing, uh, let's hear more about Martha and Mary of Bethany. They're mentioned particularly in Luke's Gospel and in John's Gospel. In Luke's Gospel, there is this story in uh, chapter uh, 10. At verse 38 and the story goes now as they went on their way he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home she had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying but Martha was distracted by her many tasks so she came to him and asked Lord do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. 
But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing Mary has chosen, the better part which will not be taken away from her. In today's world, that's a bit of a controversial story, but it does highlight what's being proclaimed, that is the importance of listening to God in Jesus Christ. Uh, you wonder how Luke's Jesus would react to an iconographer, probably very favourably because the tradition is that Luke painted the first icon. Well, here are highlights being put on the red garment. Now this time the, well it's an orange garment really because it's Mars orange and Mars orange is having a little titanium white added to it and with each application of highlight there is a little bit more titanium white still using the number three squirrel brush the story of Martha and Mary in John's gospel is significantly different because there we discover that they have a brother called Lazarus and in John's gospel he tells the story how uh, news comes to Jesus that Lazarus is really sick please come and heal him and Jesus delays a few days and news comes uh, to say well you know, don't bother coming now because uh, it's too late he has died nevertheless Jesus does go to uh, Bethany and uh, and raises Lazarus from the dead. Bethany is across the Kidron Valley from uh, Jerusalem and I uh, had a memorable Sunday morning walking from Jerusalem across the valley up the other side and looking back from uh, pretty much near where Bethany would have been back towards Jerusalem and from there in ancient times the uh, main view would have been the uh, temple. Now as I'm uh, painting highlights on the blue garment I um, uh, have made a, a new mixture of the ultramarine blue mixed it with the uh, burnt umber to knock back the blinginess of ultramarine blue and just adding the uh, titanium white a very little bit I'm trying my new pigment of titanium grey as a background. Will it work? It actually did. In the end, looked more green than grey. But I'm quite pleased with the way it turned out. There's the squirrel mop that's so good for getting large quantities of paint on and also cutting in quite neatly. It took about three coats to get a good coverage.
then uh, the inscription I decided to put the inscription below uh, particularly as there's quite a bit of space between the feet and the bottom of the icon and this time I'm using some tracing paper and uh, doing the mock-up on the uh, sketch and then tracing it onto the tracing paper and then transferring that onto the panel. Now on the panel by writing over it particularly because of the quite the soft paint underneath just by writing with pencil uh, it has uh, left enough mark on the painting on the uh, background to be able to see so that with my number two the number one Kalinsky brush I can paint with the Terra Rosa another new pigment the inscription Martha and Mary of Bethany and then came the halos so that's the painting of the icon of Martha and Mary of Bethany and what have I learned well I'm a new fan of uh, squirrel brushes softer really good for blending putting on highlights I'm a new fan of uh, titanium grey it worked really well particularly as a um, blending with ultramarine blue um, and also surprised at how effective it is as a background color. So thank you for watching these videos of Martha and Mary and I hope you return again soon when I post another Icon Diary.